Here it is, the tool from last time. What is it? If you're working on electronics, like let's say you have your computer taken apart and you're putting in a new hard drive or something, and then you take a break, go watch some TV, you come back, and you walk across the dry carpet because it's winter, and you touch the motherboard, and static electricity jumps between your finger and the motherboard, now you've ruined your mother. You could possibly ruin your motherboard from static electricity. The little spark that happens when you touch the doorknob, but instead you touched your computer or your stereo or something that you had open. Well, the idea behind this is, this is a strap that you wear on your wrist, and there's a metal contact that contacts your skin right there. And then this is plugged into the ground of your electrical system and this keeps static from building up in your body in the first place. So the idea is every time you sit down to work on something that's uh, static sensitive, you put this on and that keeps that from happening. Now the problem, apparently the problem with this is you have now grounded yourself. You have now attached yourself to the ground system in the building. And so you could conceivably touch a hot wire and um, short circuit and electrocute yourself. So according to Electroboom, who is really a, has a great YouTube channel, look him up, Electroboom, this wire has a resistor in it and that would keep high current. Only, only static current will flow, not really high current. So supposedly there's a safety in this. Um, you know, I don't know that that's true or not on this particular one, but anyway, um, that's supposed to keep you from zapping yourself. But that's what that is. I bought it to work on a camera that I never worked on. Grounding strap. Okay. So, Mr. Pete422, also known as Tubal Kane, he's doing a, uh, a video series on the mighty Delta 14-inch uh, bandsaw, woodcutting bandsaw, and how to slow it down so that it'll cut metal. And here is my wonderful Delta 14-inch bandsaw, another oldie that I got off Craigslist. I got a great deal on this, 150 bucks. It needed a fair amount of work, but I think it was a great bargain at that price. So anyway, Tubal Cain is uh, uh, slowing the bandsaw down from <clears throat> something like 3,000 feet per minute down to 200 feet per minute. In other words, getting the blade to run slowly. Why did that, this is not focusing so well? There it goes. Um, and I did that this to mine. I have another bandsaw. Where's my other bandsaw? My other bandsaw is here. <laughs> I've got another wood bandsaw. And uh, so what I wanted to do actually was I wanted a bandsaw that was a, a vertical bandsaw that I could cut metal on. And uh, I did that and I got it to run about 200 feet per minute also. And um, here's what that's like. But I think you can see there's a problem. You see what do you see what that problem is? There's a vibration. And I think I know what's causing it. So I think you can see how I slowed my bandsaw down. I used 
a jack shaft. There's the jack shaft right there. And then I used a small pulley to a large pulley. And then another small pulley to a large pulley. And I have to say, and this is a method that uh, Tubal Cain does mention, but I don't think he's going to get to this one. I think he feels that this is, uh, well, he's got other methods which I think are very cool, like he's got this electric drive motor and a pull gear and a uh, gear reduction, these other methods. But this is the one I went to because I thought it was the least expect expensive. And I think I spent about $60 getting the uh, bearings, the jack shaft, and the pulleys and belts, maybe $70. So for me, this worked out very well. And I was just able to fit everything into the existing cabinet, although the big pulley needed its own cover, which uh, is right here. I made it out of wood and an old housing, a computer housing. So, But anyway, the problem is, I think I know what the problem is. You can sort of see what's causing it right here. That belt jumping around. I think that belt is the wrong belt. And it's pulling and releasing and pulling and releasing on that big pulley. And that causes the whole saw to vibrate. So, I got this belt from, I've unplugged the saw, I got this belt from Tractor Supply. And it's called a power pulley. It's green. And I think this belt is just not flexible and supple anymore. And it's, it's pulling this down, the shaft down, and causing the vibration. Maybe, it, maybe it's too tight. I don't think it's too tight. I think this is probably a pretty good tension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take that belt off and get not a power belt, but a regular belt. From what I understand, and maybe those of you who know more than I do about this can comment in the comment section, a power belt is something that you use on a lawnmower to drive blades, um, or you use it on a, in a riding tractor, uh, riding lawn tractor to drive uh, lawnmower blades, or to uh, drive the tractor itself and it's very stiff and very strong and long lasting but it's not supple and it's green and I bought the green one because it was the it was the only one they had that was the right size so I'm going to try and find one that is like this belt here if I can find it this is just a regular rubber belt now you can't there it is there I want to try and find that one like that instead so here's me taking this off It's, it's this motion here that I think is causing the trouble. Um, this very stiff belt. This belt is, is far more flexible. This belt feels stiff. Um, I'm hoping that solves the problem. If it doesn't, I'll have to try some other things. But uh, we'll go with that for now. So here's how I got the information on doing this conversion. Converting the upright, the, hor the vertical wooden bandsaw from wood to metal to slow it down in the incredible, wonderful, popular mechanics do-it-yourself encyclopedia from 1955. Now it says right here, 1955, but I think a lot of this stuff is from the 30s and 40s based on the drawings and what's going on in here. And uh, 
You can get these sets for 20 bucks off of eBay. Here it is, came right to the right page. Bandsaw metal cutting. Uh, this chapter is A to B-O, volume one. And there it is. I'd seen this years ago because I think I had a few copies of this book and I went out and bought the whole set. But it shows the various methods by which one might slow their bandsaw down. And it recommends, where does it recommend? Right here, it recommends about 58 RPM. This says use uh, 2 to 10 and 2 to 12, which gives approximately 60 RPM, which is about 225 feet per minute with a 14-inch bandsaw. And by golly, it looks exactly like the classic Delta bandsaw. And so that's what I did. So there's also more information on the bandsaw in this cool old volume. Uh, here's this guy using a screw feed. Wood under sheet prevents burring. Anyway, this is pretty cool. And uh, I highly recommend this old version of the popular mechanics book. Uh, uh, what is it called? Popular do-it-yourself encyclopedia. Do it yourself encyclopedia. And um, they make a newer one. Get that one too. They're really inexpensive, and they're a, it's a fun read, and you know. So, okay, I have traded. I had this belt here, which I guess is Kevlar coated, and this is a belt that one would use for. You'd use this in a lawnmower to drive your, like a riding tractor when you have triple blades and you're gonna, you're gonna drive your tractor 3000 RPM and those blades are gonna whip around and so heavy, strong stuff. But I feel like this is slick. It may be tough, but it's not grabby. And maybe it's not having a good time going around that, you know, that pulley, got a two, that two inch pulley that's there. So, I got this, and this is a uh, this is just a rubber coated belt. It does feel a little more flexible. It's it's coated with rubber. I think it's still a wrapped belt. In other words, it's a belt with fabric around it, but the fabric is impregnated with rubber. I'm hoping this works. I don't know if it will, but uh, anyway, here's me changing the belt. So, so here's another view of it. There's the jack shaft with the angle iron back there and the flat piece of steel up in front. Here's the other side of it. And this goes to the motor. The motor has, I think, a three inch pulley going up to a 10 inch pulley. And then on that 10 inch pulley, then the jack shaft is a two inch pulley and that's going up to this 12 inch pulley. So that gets me down to uh, lower RPM. I'm gonna try this and see if this has cured the, the problem. The problem was this pulling here being kind of variable. And this pulley, this big 12 inch pulley is mounted pretty far out here on the shaft. If this were closer, then there would be less um, leverage. Still wiggling. I 
do feel like it's improved. And try a little belt dressing. So, with the belt dressing, slowly drying, this is better, but it's still wiggling around a lot. Here's the top of the machine. So, I just moved the pulley, the big pulley, in so it would have less leverage. The farther out here it goes, the the more bounce I'm going to get as the shaft gets longer. So I just moved it in. Now this pulley is not in great alignment with that pulley, but I want to see if I'm on the right path. Before I go to the trouble of swapping everything around, moving the motor outward, redrilling holes for the motor mount, I want to see if this is going to give me any kind of result. Try and shim the motor base. Make sure this thing isn't rocking. Well, I put a shim in the base and uh, I don't know that we really achieved much with this new belt. I'm wondering if I have too much belt tension and if less belt tension might be the answer. By the way, this um, Von Haas, Von Haas uh, battery operated tool, ratchet has been excellent, really like it. Much better than dragging the uh, air operated one around, which is why I think everybody likes these things. Now this belt is much looser than it was. The other belt down below is tighter, but this one, this one's got real slack in it, which may cause it to slip. I may have to be causing other problems doing this. So that's a good question. What what am I what am I giving up with this? I just cut a couple of wooden shims. And uh, I'll see if I gain anything with this. Cordless ratchet. Von Haas cordless ratchet. Seems to be maybe 12 volt lithium ion, maybe a copy of the uh, older Makita or Milwaukee. I'm not sure, but it seemed like a real good deal on eBay. All right, once again, we'll try it again with the much looser belt. Like that's some success. But now 
I may have a slipping problem. We'll try to cut some steel. One thing I saw in the last video Tubal Cain made, Mr. Pete made, is he started to use um, cutting fluid, lubrication. I always use it on these blades, and I'm also using a, a bi-metal blade, a, really one of the best blades you can get for cutting steel. Let's try it. Yeah, it's sawing out. That's about one inch of steel right there. Cutting this channel goes from one eighth to one inch. And uh, that's kind of a nice test because you see what it's like cutting about eighth inch, which is pretty thick, to one inch, which is really thick. Sort of feel that a faster speed might be better. But let's find out. Put a mark here. So that was a little less than 30 in 30 seconds. So 60 RPM. And uh, that's what the what they want you to do. They want you to go at 60 RPM. Uh, I think Tubal Cain's up over, maybe he's faster with his various ones. So I'm gonna try to uh, cut some steel with this and see how it goes. See if I think it's smooth enough. 60 RPM uh, converts into, I will put the uh, math on the screen right now in terms of RPM with a 14 inch wheel, figuring out the circumference of the wheel, giving us uh, feet per minute. And here it is. Okay. If you want to make your saw go slow so you can cut steel with it, make it a dedicated steel cutting saw. That's a 10 inch pulley, a 12 inch pulley. There's a couple of pillow blocks which are bearings mounted in those green housings. They call them pillow blocks. Don't know why. There is a two inch pulley there and then on the machine itself there is the, uh, the three inch pulley. All right, so where are we? I decided what I wanted to do was, I wanted to move this pulley as close to this support bearing as possible so that I'd have less of an effect when this thing pulls. 
it's pulling here instead of out here. Um, maybe that's not a lot, but anyway, I want to give this thing every opportunity to be smoother. So to do that, I flipped the pulleys on the jack shaft. Let me turn on the light. It used to be that this pulley here was over here and this was here, so I swapped them. And I think it's going to work. I haven't started it yet because I rotated it by hand. Now this is all still unplugged. I rotated it by hand and everything's groovy until right there it jammed. And what's happening is this boss, just the edge of it, is striking here but on the other side. So I'm just going to take the Dremel and carve that down. I could take the whole thing apart for the fifth time and turn that pulley around, but I think I'm just going to zip it with the Dremel. It's all operating smoothly. Let's give it a shot. I think it's a lot better than it was before, way better. It seems smooth enough to use. Here's what the top of the saw looks like because we were kind of looking at that. So that's really good. I pushed quite hard and I didn't see any stalling. And um, that's a you know, one inch cut down to an eighth of an inch cut and back up to a one inch cut again. So I think this is solved. Here is the tool for next time. The largest tool yet shown. What is it? What does it do?